Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Many students have problems cleaning and shaping curved canals. So we're putting together this tape to show you how to avoid these problems when you're, when you're assigned a tooth with a curved canal. And if you do run into a problem, how to uh, remedy it, if it's possible. So let's go to an artist's representation and show you uh, the kinds of things that you'll run into with a curved canal. These are the kinds of teeth that you'll see curved canals in lower molars, the mesial roots, the buccal roots of upper molars, and often on maxillary laterals. But we'll use this as an example. You can see that the distal root canal is uh, a lot straighter and larger. So this one should be no particular problem. The mesial is very fine and very curved. And you often run into problem with ledging the tooth right down here and then not being able to complete the final root canal. Since this is such a fine canal, in the undergraduate clinic you would be filling all of these with silver cone preparation and as a result um, you would instrument them for a silver cone. Now let's go to what the, fi what the final preparation would look like. Final preparation has the distal root all smooth and clean in shape. The mesial roots, you follow the curve all the way around right to the apical constriction. You have it very small because it needs a small file to get around this curve. And you can see in the cross section, it's uh, filed to a nice round shape. The problem is to get from the uh, initial tooth to this final and maintain this length throughout the entire preparation. So let's take a closer look at this root right here, and I'll show you the kinds of problems that you can run into. Here we have uh, the root with the canal, and it's been instrumented, let's say, to a size 20 file. The 20 is a fairly flexible file, and it can get around these curves fairly well. And let's say you've instrumented it and kept your length, and now you're ready, you think, to go to a 25 file. This is the point where students often get in trouble when they change sizes. So you come down, you've curved your file, and you think that you're in, good, you're in good shape. You feed it on down the canal, and then you find out that you're about two millimeters short. Now, if you do it properly to keep out of trouble, as soon as you feel with this file that you're short and you can't get to your length, you should pull it out immediately. Don't put any pressure on it at all. If you do put pressure on it to try and force it, which is what students often do, you're forcing it right down here. This is because the 25 file isn't nearly as flexible as the 20 file, and it straightens out when you pass it through this part of the canal, and when it gets down here, it can't make the curve, and it starts to gouge into this wall right down here. So you push, and you get a little gouge, you pull it back out, and you start to instrument against this wall, you know, as you're pulling, and you start to create a straight channel right down along this and right out here. And if you keep on pushing and pulling once or twice is all it takes, you end up with kind of a ledge right down here, which looks something like this. Now once you get a ledge you know, on the curve of a canal like this, you're in big trouble because you've straightened the canal, you've changed the shape of the canal, and all of your files from now on are gonna feed right on down into, this, situ into this, this ledging area. Now, if you know, if you try it once or twice, and this is what students do, they create a ledge, then they go back to the, then they go back to the previous size file, the 20. But now not even the 20 will get down because it hits right down here also, and you run into the same situation. Now here, there, once you get a ledge like this, there are more or less two things that you can do. The first is to go back to a number 10 file with a very extreme curve and try and negotiate this wall, staying away from the ledge, getting all the way down to your initial length. If you can do that, then you can instrument the tooth out starting from the beginning, once again, being very careful, 
and you can by bypass this ledge. The trouble is, oftentimes you can't. Oftentimes even the tin file will get caught up here. The second thing that you can do, or you should do, is if you can't get by the ledge, you ought to stop. Instrument it just to the ledge, realize that you've made a mistake, and just kind of call it quits. And uh, you'll fill the tooth right to here. Unfortunately, students sometimes feel like they just have to get that uh, length back. So they'll take that 25 file and screw it in and screw it in and push against here and push against here to the point that they end up with a situation that looks like this. Now you've compounded your problems. You not only have not filled the tooth all the way or instrument the tooth all the way to the apex, but you've created a perforation, which will irritate the periapical tissues. So you have an unclean canal here and an irritation right here. So you can see it's far, far better never to force it, never to force your file. Accept your mistake if you make it. That's how, how to handle it. And uh, the way to not make the mistake is to stay with a smaller file as long as possible. That's the key to uh, handling these curved canals. Stay small. So now let's go to a tooth, and I want to show you uh, a few things of actually how to handle the instruments so that you don't get into this problem and what it looks like when you do get into the problems. Here's the radiograph of a tooth very similar to the one that we showed you in the graphic. As you can see, the mesial canals are very curved. And yet, with a small uh, file, this is a number 15 file, there's no problem negotiating that curve and getting to your proper length, establishing your proper length. OK, let's go to the tooth now, and uh, I'll show you how things are working. In the tooth, I have a number 20 file. And I've instrumented it just about the way I think is necessary. Come around from here so you can see. It fits fairly loosely in the canal and go up and down. Now I'll pull the file out. Let's say we're done with it, just with the graphic. Now I want to show you one thing. Can you see how this file is bent? I haven't made as much of a point of this, but if you're working in a curved canal, you always work with a uh, curved file, always, always. I just kind of assume that you would recognize that. If you go down with a straight file, you'll be in trouble just from the beginning, no matter what size it is. So you curve your file and try and match it to the curve of the canal that you're working in, and then keep it in that direction. So here's the 20 file. Let me uh, put some sodium hypochlorite in the tooth, flood that, wash out any debris, and then we'll go to the 25 file, and we'll show you what happens. Have to Angle it properly, get it down, work it down slowly. OK, now right here, without any pressure, I can feel that I'm binding. If I pushed on it anymore, I wouldn't get it farther. Now here is where I should, if I were going to do it properly, pull the file out of the tooth and start to instrument again with a 20 until this one goes all the way without binding. But let's say I'm an inexperienced student. I work it on down, and then I push, I push a little bit farther, pull out, push a little bit farther, work, come out, push a little bit farther. Uh, there, I think that's about all it takes. There, I got a little bit farther. That's about all it takes. And now I got a good ledge down there. So you realize it's fairly easy to do. Now, I want to show you a radiograph and show you what this will look like. There you go. Now, that's with the 25 file in place. And I've straightened out the canal now with just that little bit of filing. And um, I've formed a ledge. I'm no longer making that curve. And now I'm in big trouble. So coming back to the tooth, if I take this one out finally, give up, and go back to the 20 file, let me. Uh, Flush this out. And I go back to the size 20. There we go. 
I find that now this one won't go all the way to the place. I've ledged it, and now I've lost my length. And it's easy to do. So now the only th chance I have is to go back to a 10. This is if I were going to try and do it correctly. Pull this one out, flush it again, and go back to a number 10 file with a very sharp curve. Can you see how that is on my, yeah. Now we have a sharper curve on this, and we're going to try and get around the inside of, of that curve to bypass this ledge. Now work it on down, back and forth, and I've made myself a good ledge. I can't get by it. Now, if I were actually doing this in a case, in a tooth, I would work with a 10 file for a long time. You can't do much damage, and you might find a pathway by that ledge. This is what you do once you get a ledge. You go all the way back and work with your smallest file, hoping you can get around it. You pull it out, recurve the file, and put it back in. But now I think I've made the point that the ledge is there. I can push, and I would really have to work to get it by. So let's say I'm really an, an inexperienced student, and I say, OK, I'm going to get that length back. So I pull out my 10, and I'll flush. I go back to my 25. Curved properly, I say, well, I guess it's just too small. All I have to do is work, and I work, and I work up. And that's what it'll feel like. Now, I'll show you a radiograph of what this looks like. As you can see, I got my length back, but it's very easy when you're really forcing to go right out the side of the tooth. Now, this will make us very unhappy if we see things like this. So remember um, what I told you about not getting to this position. Now, just as a recap, you always curve the file when you're working in a curved canal. No matter what size the file is, curve the file when working in a curved canal. Stay small when you're working in a curved canal, 10, 15, 20. That's, as long as you can stay in those sizes, you'll probably be in good shape. You should. Uh, Return to a smaller file as often as you need to. As soon as the next size larger, you feel like the slightest bind, return to the smaller size file. And in curved canals like this, don't take them beyond a 25 ever without an instructor's specific permission, because that'll keep you away from bad ledges and perforations too. If you have any questions on this, see your handout or ask your instructor. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.